This tutorial will show how to use two PlayStation Eyes to set up your PlayStation Move service. However, the software supports up to four cameras. With that being said, let's get into the parts list. You'll need two PlayStation Move controllers, two PlayStation Eyes, and an ASUS Bluetooth adapter to connect your controllers to the PC. Links to purchase these products will be in the video description, as well as on the PlayStation Move service wiki. Make sure you have a spare mini USB cable lying around, as you'll need one of these to plug in the PlayStation Move controllers to your PC to sync them up, and make sure you have the proper mounting hardware for your setup, such as tripods, mounts, and most importantly, USB extension cables, because the cable length of the PlayStation Eyes aren't nearly long enough. It's important to keep in mind that the field of view of PlayStation Eye cameras are only 75 degrees, so plan your setup accordingly. With that being said, I assume you have these things in hand, so let's move on to step two. Now it's time to set up the camera hardware for your PlayStation Eye setup. With these particular tripods, you can slide the PlayStation Eye base right into them and secure them that way. Keeping the Oculus tracking camera in the center of your setup, place the two PlayStation Eyes on either side. This configuration is the recommended one, and appears to give you the best tracking volume. Now that the cameras are in the right location, it's time to plug them into your computer, along with the ASUS Bluetooth adapter. At this point, you should make sure your PlayStation Eye is in the higher field of view setting. You do this by turning the lens to the right, and lining up the white dot with the blue dot. Now's a good time to install all the software we need. First off, download the most recent release of the PS Move service. For use in later steps, also install the USB DVU software and the Zadig USB driver installation tool. With all those things downloaded, it's time to extract your PlayStation Move service and navigate to 64-bit and bin. Now you're ready for the next step. If you haven't already, it's time to run SteamVR Room Setup. Choose Standing Only, and hold the rift back enough so the center of the play space is within range of the two PlayStation Eye cameras. Now it's time to measure the floor. Since I'm 5'11", I typed in 71 inches and put the rift on my head. That completes HMD configuration. Now leave SteamVR running, because you'll need it for headset tracking in the PlayStation Move service. This is when things start getting exciting. Open up the USB DVU software and scroll down to see if your PlayStation eyes are showing up. They show up as USB camera B4.09.24.1 interface 0. With that being checked, it's now time to open up Zadig. In Zadig, go to options and check list all devices. Once you do that, use the drop down menu to find your PlayStation eye. Remember, it's interface 0. Once you select it, it probably won't have a driver installed. So, on the list on the right, scroll down until it says LibUSB Win32. Now select Install Driver, or in my case, Reinstall Driver. This allows for the PlayStation Move service to access the cameras. Repeat the same step for the other camera by selecting it on Zadig and replacing the driver with LibUSB Win32. Now that that's done, you should be able to go to your bin folder and run the testcameras.exe. If all goes well, both cameras will show up and it will say that you have two cameras plugged in. If not, I've created a video on common solutions for the PlayStation Eye camera drivers. Well, now that both your cameras are showing up in the software, we can now continue to the next step. Now's the time that we're going to use that mini USB cable. First, open the psmoveservice.exe, and after that's loaded up, open up the psmove config tool. In the config tool, Go to controller settings. At this point, you should see a host serial number up top, which represents your ASUS Bluetooth adapter. Plug in the mini USB cable to one of your PlayStation Move controllers, and select pair USB controller in the software. Once you click this, you can unplug the mini USB cable, and you have to repeatedly press the PlayStation button until the controller is paired with the computer. Just do the exact same thing with the other controller, and now you're ready for the next step. In controller settings, on controller 0, click on calibrate magnetometer. Once you do that, you basically swing the controller all around until it reaches 100%. 
After that, face it upright. And when you do that, it will measure the reference magnetic field direction. Complete the same on the other controller, then they will both be calibrated. In tracker settings, go to calibrate tracking colors. Fiddle with the exposure and gain to make sure the controller colors really pop against the background. After that, right click the ball with the tracking color that you want to have calibrated, in this case magenta. Now change your video filter mode to masked, and you should see that the background is completely black except for the controller. If that's not the case, feel free to fiddle with these options to make it perfect. Now do the same with cyan, right click on it and switch the video filter mode back to masked. And if that is accurate, then you're going to want to save the default profile and apply default profile and go on to the next camera and do the exact same thing. Now that you've done that on both cameras, it's time for the next step. Place both controllers in range of the two PlayStation eyes as well as the Oculus sensor. Lay the controllers flat and print out the calibration mat, link in the video description. First off, make sure that your Oculus is tracking in SteamVR, and if so, start the calibration. It'll bring up a window, which you probably will have to zoom out of, and then you can see that your Oculus is tracking perfectly. Now select Use Calibration Mat. It's time to place the magenta controller upright on the number one. Line it up on the center of that corner graphic. The camera should take 60 samples each. If one or both of the cameras aren't sampling, that means that the PlayStation Move controller is either out of view of the camera or the color calibration is not correct. So if that's the case, go back and fix that. So once the sample's done, you then move the controller to number two, then number three, and at this point I grab my Oculus because you don't want it to be laying flat. Uh, after number five, it would automatically skip the HMD calibration if you don't have it tilted. So I'm just holding it by my side so that doesn't happen. So now moving the controller to number four and number five. And once you move the controller off here, you can basically lay it down. And now it's time to line up the Oculus on the HMD line. This basically aligns two separate camera technologies to the same coordinate plane, so the controllers are where you'd expect them to be. And just like that, you are done the calibration. On to the final step. At this point, you can close SteamVR, because the calibration's done, we'll be reopening that soon. Start up by running the SteamVR initial setup bat. This will bring up a browse to folder where you basically find the Steam root directory, which is usually in program files. After you do that, you can exit the command prompt, and now you can open the SteamVR reinstall wizard. And this basically installs the driver. And now there's one final thing you have to do before you can open SteamVR. Navigate to your Steam folder and then config. Now open SteamVR.VR settings in a program such as Notepad. Scroll down until you find the SteamVR section, and add this one line, which I will have in the video description, which says activate multiple drivers, which means you can have the Oculus driver running as well as the PlayStation Move driver all at the same time. Once you have this, make sure you have a comma at the end, and uh, file save, and uh, yeah, make sure it saves, and now it is time to open SteamVR. As you can see, everything is working perfectly, the controllers are showing up just fine, and now you can explore the world of Vive games with your PlayStation Move controllers. Now whenever you want to open SteamVR, you first open the PlayStation Move service, then SteamVR, and everything will load up. And if you want to make any changes to your PlayStation Move service configuration, simply do it after SteamVR is open, and then close SteamVR and reopen it to apply the new configuration. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, it really helps out the channel. And special thanks to all the developers of the PlayStation Move service. It's so awesome to see the community come together and support a project like this. So that being said, I'll have some content of me playing games with this PlayStation Move service later on the channel. And I hope this tutorial helps, so I will see you all later. Bye!